So Lena, how did you get into porn? Actually, you know what? Let's start. Let's back up a little bit. What did you do before you got into porn? A whole lot of nothing <laughs> and a whole lot of shitty jobs and a lot of drugs. <laughs> um, a lot of just fucking off and kind of like, you know, trashing my body. I was kind of like a gypsy, you know, in and out of homelessness. Um, just kind of, I don't know, very nihilistic very cynical still pretty cynical but in a totally different way um and you know i worked at like the mall a bunch and like you know different food service jobs and you know i worked at a, a head shop you know selling weed pipes and all that and right i think the job that i had right before porn though well, not right before but the job the last job i had before porn so it was a big gap of me being like homeless and not doing shit i worked in an animal hospital which is actually the one job of the porn I found rewarding and like, mm -hmm. you know, something I was like not fired from too, which is pretty much all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> not for lack of trying either. I just don't function well as like, I don't know, kind of structures and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I got into porn like totally randomly. It just kind of fell in my lap, you know? Um, I was like, you know, car homeless in New York, which is like, you know, a lot better than homeless homeless um it's a very different experience but still fucking sucks and um i kind of like you know the summer was ending and i was like you know i can't do this winter here you know i gotta figure something out so uh, a couple friends of mine just happened to be taking a road trip to california so i was like bring me with you and just leave me there when you go back you know just mm -hmm. go to venice beach and live out my years it's a bum you know and at least i'll be pretty warm for yeah it's gonna say it'd be easier anyway. probably in california than in new york yeah and that was my original plan so you know there was like a two-week gap between like you know when they were gonna leave and i was gonna go with them and we made the plan and like about a few days like three or four days before um their cousins and they got in a fight and then they were just like okay we're not doing the trip i was like so set on it i was just like well i have to get out of the cold so I have a big bag of pot. <laughs> this is like gonna sound totally insane. I've got this big bag of pot that I got from my ex-boyfriend's father who got electrocuted in the Navy. So he had a greenhouse where he grew pot. Mm -hmm. And when my- Wait, what did him being electrocuted in the Navy have to do with him He was eating a bunch weed of food for the pain, I guess. Oh, okay, gotcha, um, I gotcha, yeah. okay. So you needed it for medical reasons. Okay. Yes, and I lived with him before I went like car homeless mm -hmm. and if you wanted to just go back a little bit to an even more outrageous part of the story um my boyfriend at the time basically i was so strung out and like psychedelics basically he brought me to his father's house in the middle of nowhere because i was living with him apparently driving him up the wall mm -hmm. i did not know that <laughs> apparently and he said you know we went there he dropped me off he said i'll be back in like a few hours never came back <laughs> so I'm living with this guy's like kooky father in the middle of nowhere, you know. <laughs> um, and I've got, you know, you know, I was just there eating like pickles and beer basically and mushrooms for like weeks. And fast forward, it's sort of an irrelevant topic, just kind of a funny tidbit. Fast forward to when I the trip got canceled, I've got this big bag of pot because his father gave me big bags of pot. You know what I mean? Um, and it was untrimmed, you know, it's like um clippings or whatever because i guess when you cook it you don't need like to trim it it's just kind of like you know kind of right up the stalk or something mm -hmm. so the car i was living in actually had no brakes and i just um like couldn't really go anywhere with it but i wanted to go across the country to move and now mm -hmm. in this short period between me taking this bag of pot and bringing it to this mechanic i knew in town i met up with my friend Casey, who had just come back from LA. And Casey is, uh, oops, yeah, here we go. Casey um, came back from LA. I said, hey, what's up? She's actually, um, her boyfriend's the one who did all my feather tattoos and my cat tattoo. She's, we're talking and she mentions like, I met all these porn people out in LA. And I was like, just a light bulb went off in my head. Um, and I was just like, let me get like a name or an email or a number like 
what's up? Like, let me get something, you know? And so I got this guy's email and he emailed him. And then he gave me Gruby's email, Stephen Gruby. And so we emailed him and I did a little audition tape in my friend's kitchen, you know, while he was at work, you know, I took some pictures and stuff like that. And I sent it to him and he was just like, yeah, we'll shoot two scenes for you. Come to Vegas. I was just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> I'll go to Vegas instead. I'm like, screw it. So I took this bag of pot and like a little bit of money I had and I went to this mechanic and I told him, because I had no brakes in my car. I said, I need a car. It's just going to get me across the country. I don't give a fuck what it breaks down when you get there. I don't care how ugly it is. I don't care what it is. Just I need something. And two days pass. And he also asked me if there is a preference, you know, like, what is it? And I was driving this black Nissan Pathfinder at the time. So I was kind of like, I don't know. I want like another black SUV, preferably, whatever. So two days pass and he calls me and he's got this uh, black Super Forester 02. Hmm. And, you know, it's not the prettiest car in the world. It had no air conditioning. You know, it's like end of August. So it's like, you know, pretty hot. No title, no registration, no nothing. I gave this guy a big bag of pot and some money and he gave me the keys of the Subaru I basically could fit my entire belongings in a purse about this big this tall um it was a fry bag and I just took my crap and just basically put Vegas in my GPS and just started driving there <laughs> and you know I had a little bit of dough left so I stayed you know I think I stayed in Cleveland and Missouri and New Mexico for sure black stuff I stayed and then you know I got to Vegas before I left I'd actually arranged a um room which ended up being with a bunch of wacky satanists fun loving satanists they weren't like you know that dark and brooding or anything and I basically drove to their address in Vegas shot my little scenes you know and you know you get a twitter the day you start porn basically if you don't have one and it's the director said he was like Radio star Groovy was like, you need Twitter. And I was like, all right. Never had one, got one, you know. And from there, you know, it just snowballs. You know, your scene comes out and then people see it and then different companies see it that want to hire you and then they put it out on Twitter again. And, you know, it's like, that's where it started, I guess, you know. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.